Well, let me bring in Dan Wolken, USA Today, national columnist talking about college football. How would you sum up your column, Dan? The way I would sum it up is that right now, there are so many different dynamics that are going into how you know these conference commissioners of the big conferences are looking at the NCAA, how they're looking at reform and the way to address a lot of these issues like name, image, and likeness and all the lawsuits and Supreme Court cases. And, you know, it certainly seems like the next iteration of this is going to be the big conferences driven by the SEC and the Big Ten because they make the most money, kind of having a subdivision all on their own within Division One to be able to, at least in their mind, deal with all of these things without the red tape and without the smaller schools kind of slowing down the, the gears of, of NCAA rulemaking. Whether or not that's the ultimate answer to any of their problems is, I, I, I have no idea. You know, I, I think there's just so many differences, even between the big schools on some of these issues. It's not an easy fix, but it certainly seems like whatever they do is going to further squeeze out the little guy. And it feels like it's inevitable, not if, but when. And then you start to look at this. Could you foresee maybe the Big 12 grabs Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, and Colorado, tries to piece something together there? Big 10. Big 10 might reach out to North Carolina and North Carolina State and uh, Syracuse. If they get Notre Dame, the SEC might have Florida State and Clemson and Miami. Feels like we got three kind of superpowers here and is that college football yeah I really think the best thing would be if everybody could kind of just like get in a room together and just put all their cards on the table and hash it out so we have something that that makes sense as opposed to what we're going to end up having over the next decade which is sort of this slow migration of you know a school here a school there into these leagues and yeah, they're, they're going to start to look crazy. You know, USC, UCLA, the only West coast schools in the big 10. So you're telling me that they're going to send their, their volleyball team and their tennis team, you know, all across the country several times a year. Uh, That's not going to be good for anybody except for the people who are counting the money in those athletic departments. But it just seems to me like, you know, right now you just heard Jim Phillips at ACC media days in in Charlotte, you know, he kind of is is counting on this grant of rights that binds these ACC schools together until 2036. Mm. It would cost, you know, probably nine figures for one of these schools to go challenge that or to try to get out of it to go to the Big Ten. So I think things are probably going to be a little bit slower, but everyone sort of believes that we're heading to this place where, yeah, if it's two conferences, if it's three conferences, 50 schools, they're going to be the only ones that matter in football, you know, and maybe in other sports too. I think we haven't quite dealt with that reality yet either. Then you have Notre Dame. Notre Dame reportedly is looking at $75 million deal, I believe, with NBC. Um, If not, because the Big Ten media rights haven't been settled yet. So it feels like the Big Ten is sort of waiting for Notre Dame if that doesn't happen, then if Notre Dame joins the Big Ten, uh, does that sound like the the logical trail here? I, I think so. I don't think Notre Dame's priority is 100% about money. Now, they're going to obviously need to be competitive in the marketplace. They prefer to be independent. And I think they will exhaust those options before they jump in with any league, including the Big Ten. And I think the main consideration for Notre Dame is going to be what is their access to the future of the college football playoff? Because they want to be in a situation where they have a chance to win the whole thing. And, you know, I think the way it's going to work out for Notre Dame to their benefit is that the SEC would prefer Notre Dame not join the Big Ten. I think the SEC would prefer Notre Dame kind of keeping status quo uh, because, yeah, if the Big Ten doesn't expand anymore this time or right now, then there's really not going to be a lot of incentive for the SEC to do anything either. So that's why I kind of think we're maybe in a little bit of a pause here, but yeah, if Notre Dame woke up tomorrow and said, all right, we're going to go to the big 10 and make, you know, 80, 90, a hundred million dollars. That is to me, the tipping point where you could see things get really crazy, really fast. What's the SEC's goal? You know, I, I don't know that the SEC necessarily has a goal that's tied to number of teams. Uh, I think they 
really just want to be out front in terms of determining what college athletics looks like and to be able to use whatever rules, laws, paying players, NIL, whatever the system is, they want to be in a position to shape that to their competitive advantage in, in football. Uh, they're going to make all the money they want to make. You know, any they could go issue invitations tomorrow and uh, schools will be happy to go join the SEC. But I, I don't think that they're just going to take schools to take them. I think anyone they take would have to be a value add. And I don't think that right now there's very many schools other than, say, Notre Dame, you know, maybe Clemson, maybe Florida State, North Carolina. But it's it's a small handful that right now would, would enhance the SEC. So I think they're just kind of lying in wait right now, seeing how it shakes out with the Big Ten. I'm surprised that grownups are surprised about name, image, and likeness. I, I mean, how did they not see that this would be open? I remember listening to a coach. He's a current coach. Don't want to say his name, but he said, nobody's going to spend money for an offensive lineman. I said, why not? He protects your star quarterback. He opens the holes for your running backs. Nobody's going to spend money for defensive linemen. I go, why not? Look at the draft. Those are the guys who go in the top 10. I get, this is crazy that they're, they're, they're basically going, wait, what just happened here? Where are we going with name, image, and likeness? Well, I think that there could be some settling of the market in the sense that this is the first year where kids that were uh, signing these deals as recruits are ending up on college campuses. And guess what? A lot of them are not going to be good players, or they're at least not going to be impactful players to the level that the people who paid that money would maybe expect. So is that going to chill the market a little bit? Are people going to be, you know, maybe less uh, eager to, you know, write six figure checks to 18 year olds who are totally unproven as college football players? We'll, we'll see. What surprises me is just that the leadership of college sports and you, you're hearing it at media days. You heard Sankey at the SEC, Phillips at the ACC. They're talking about still relying on Congress to come in and write some national standard that, that takes this patchwork of state laws and puts everybody on, on the same playing field. And, you know, I just kind of want to, you know, shake these guys by the scruff of their neck and say, Congress is not going to do anything. They're not going to save you. They can barely get <laughs> things passed right now that actually do good things for, you know, hundreds of millions of people. This is not a high priority item for Congress. I don't care if it's Democrats or Republicans in charge. It's hard to pass anything. It's hard to come to an agreement. What they actually want to do in Washington is have these hearings so that they can drag Mark Emmert or conference commissioners, you know, in front of them and, and get their social media clips by lecturing them. That's what they want. They're not interested in passing anything. This is going to be up to the NCAA leadership and the members themselves to solve this. Hmm. You don't need any of these state laws. You've already made uh, you've already made it legal to accept these payments. Write your own rules. If you are afraid of getting taken to court, so be it. You get taken to court over everything else. Just do it and then see what happens. And don't rely on Congress to act because they're not going to do it. Dan, great to talk to you again. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Dan Wonkin, USA Today national columnist.